Hello and welcome to the program. I am Ogechiku Ukekwe. The federal government has approved the disbursement of 25 billion naira to the National Primary Health Care Development Agency and the National Health Insurance Authority to expand the enhanced health delivery to Nigerians. The Coordinating Minister of Health and Social Welfare, Ali Party, disclosed this while reaffirming the relenting commitment to the present administration to transforming the health care system to attain universal health care coverage for Nigerians. In a statement signed by the spokesperson for the ministry, Patricia Dewarishe in Abuja, the ministry said health transformation renewal and accessibility would be achieved with the approval of a sector-wide approach and the health sector renewal investment program. Party explained that the guidelines will be reversed to cover health services rendered to the indigent population while aiming to reduce maternal mortality rates, out-of-pocket payments, and standardized health care quality across health care facilities. Pregnancy is a transformative journey for women, both physically and emotionally. It typically lasts around 40 weeks and is divided into three trimesters. During pregnancy, a woman's body undergoes numerous challenges to support the growth and development of the baby. Overall, pregnancy is a unique and precious time in a woman's life, marked by anticipation, joy, and sometimes challenges. Breastfeeding is one of the most effective ways to ensure child health and survival. However, contrary to WHO recommendation, no fewer than half of infants under six months old are exclusive to breastfed. Breast milk is the ideal food for infants. It is safe, clean and contains antibodies which help prevent against common child illness. Breast milk provides all the energy and nutrients that the infant needs for the five months of life and it continues to provide up to half or more of a child's nutritional needs during the second half of the first year and up to one child during the second half of the first year. Women who breastfed also have a reduced risk of breastfeeding and ovarian cancer. The birth of a baby can start as a variety of powerful emotions, from excitement and joy to fear and anxiety. But it can also result in something you might not expect, which is depression. Most new moms experience postpartum baby blues after childbirth, which commonly includes mood swings, crying spells, anxieties, and difficulties sleeping. Baby blue usually begin with the first two to three days after delivery and may last for up to two weeks. But some new moms experience a more severe long-lasting form of depression, known as postpartum depression. Sometimes it is called peripartum depression because it can start during pregnancy and continue after childbirth. Really, an extreme mood disorder called postpartum psychosis also may develop after childbirth. We'll take a break now. When we return, we'll discuss the benefits of breastfeeding. Stay with us. Welcome back. Joining me to discuss further is Dr. Gabriel Akinyemi, Integrative Care Physician, Women's Health. Thank you for joining me on the program, sir. So what would you say are the benefits of breastfeeding for both mother and the baby? Because in some, most cases, women don't see the need to, be, to breastfeed their children. Um, um, thank you so much for having me. Um, breastfeeding is a very, very... Um, yeah, is beyond just a mother to infant or child thing. Breastfeeding to me is a journey. It's a journey that I encourage uh, women uh, or mothers to go through for their own benefit and for the babies and for the child's benefit. Um, starting from the child's angle, you see, if you are very close to the pediatric clinic, the children's clinic, um, you will see different type of children. And, uh, you know, as journalists, you might have come across um, children that are malnourished, children that have uh, uh, malnutrition, 
uh, we there's common saying we there's one that is very common. You hear kwashoko, you know, you hear, you know, you, when you see them, you know that something is wrong with this child. They look malnourished. Uh, so from the child's angle or from the infant's angle, the breast milk is the most nutritious food the baby can get at that stage or at that age. It is the most nutritious. And that's no reason. And funny enough, as the baby or the infant grows, the body adjusts to produce the right nutritional requirement in the breast milk for the child. Do you know what that means? When, um, apart from the, the colostrum that comes out immediately, the baby, a uh, few days after the baby is delivered, the first milk, the first yellowish, um, white, uh, yellowish uh, milk that comes out, which, which has a lot of antibodies, which immunes the child from diseases, from short-term or long-term illnesses. You know, it helps um, um, the child, you know, the child's immunity. Now, aside that, one thing I want people to know as regards uh, the breast milk is this. As the child moves from one month to two months, what the child is getting in one month as breast milk is not what the child is getting as, you know, two month old child or infant. So do you know how, so, so it's so interesting that the body adjusts, the body knows the babies or the infant's nutritional requirement and the body makes provisions for it. So it is very, very vital that infants are well breastfed and women go through the standard breastfeeding program. Yes, there's a standard breastfeeding program. You can find it at the primary care center. Um, um, uh, you can be advised even at primary care, even by community extension, um, health extension worker, on uh, when you go for immunization on how to continue breastfeeding, or by a primary care physician or doctor at the primary care center, or doctors at any level that is well informed and uh, uh, knowledgeable about breastfeeding. So the breastfeeding is a program that I encourage all mothers to participate at 100% for their own benefit also. So let me address more benefits um, as regards the breastfeeding for uh, the, the infant. I've talked about um, it immune the infant, the child, from long-term and short-term illnesses. Yes. It also helps, you know, as the child, um, as the infant grow, you understand. When I say grow, as in physical growth, you understand. Huh? It helps the child to grow well. The brain function of the child, the high sight function of the child, you know, the sensory system of the child, you know, the physique of the child, you understand. So it helps the overall growth of the infant. So some women feel the need to breastfeed a child for six months or less. So what, as a professional, how long would you recommend or what would you advise for how long do you think a child should be breastfed? Um, <laughs> I can be very funny, yeah. Let me make my viewers laugh a little. Even me right now. <laughs> I'm still, for me, <laughs> it can be very funny, you know. You know, when sometimes we and colleagues, when we talk and tip chat, I tell them that me, I'm still undergoing the breastfeeding program. I'm still sucking. Yeah, it can be very funny, but that's that, that just to let you know that, you know, breastfeeding has, is really, really not talked about well. We need to raise more awareness, create more awareness, awareness on the need for adequate breastfeeding. Um, the standards that we have, you know, on the average is a year. You understand? That's on the average. You know, like when I mean a year, you know, most women do six months and stop. 
you know, some can do, you know, um, nine months and stop. But we all know that in most homes, I'm giving a, a practical um, um, breastfeeding program, you know, most women will breastfeed their child for 12 months. And for me, personally, from my experience, I'm always, I've always advised that at least breastfeed your child for a year plus, if possible, at least a year, you understand. So um, we have certain standards, you know, sometimes show six months, uh, show at least six months. Uh, but like I've said, for me, when I do advise uh, my breastfeeding uh, uh, mothers, a patient, tell them at least try. Sometimes I have to go to our native languages like Yoruba and say, you know, egg be your Jew, and for Moloyon, at least or do come, you know, just to make them understand, you know, I let them know, you know, the, the benefits with charts, with diagrams, and all of that, what the child will be getting from the breast milk that they can't get from the food right now, you know, making them understand why it is very important. You know, some of them have, you know, come back. Uh, it can even reduce risk of a woman having a fibroadenoma. You understand? Some of these, you know, breast lump that even young ladies have that are not even married, you understand? And, uh, you know, because, uh, like I said, it's just, be it's not just breastfeeding. It's a program. It's like a standard that every woman should follow for their own well-being or good and for the child's well-being. So basically, like I've said, I always recommend a year, 12-month feeding program. Super. You're good. You know, it helps your child. And uh, But most women, most women do not do up to um, 12 months a year. Um, some of them stop at seven. Some of them, some of them just follow starting standards at six months and say, "Well, I've done exclusive for six months, and then I'm bringing in baby food and all of that supports my child and all of that." And some still give breast milk alongside. Okay, so now in the issue of breast pumps, so what, what's your take? What are the potential risks or side effects of using a breast pump? Okay, breast pumps. Yeah, yeah I, I think that for me, um, um, there's a saying, you know, there being an integrated care physician, we advocate a lot for natural processes. Yes, like we advocate a lot for um, things when it comes to preventive medicine, when it comes to doing things naturally we believe um more you know in the medical guidelines though we believe um it has much more benefits do you know that i did a research just to in line with my school of thought that when you mix smoothie you understand when you eat fruits what you get is a little bit different a little bit different from what you get when you make use your blender for smoothie, you understand. So what am I trying to let you understand with this example is that, yes, breast pump is not a bad idea at all, not at all. And there's nothing wrong with a woman or mothers using breast pump. In fact, I'm advocating for our government to please look into at the general hospital, give free breast pumps to mothers. I'm calling on the NGOs in Nigeria, you know, in relation to women's health, child and mother support, please, part of what you should give to mothers is breast pumps to help them, you know, when they are at home or when they need to run around some things, just to make sure that the family is okay. And, uh, you know, just to put things in shape and balance and still be able to breastfeed their child. So breast pump is not a bad idea, but it is not as best as breastfeeding directly your child directly so it's not as best as that for your own good it's like a process as the as the child sucks it's a type of um health benefit you get you understand machine is totally different from you know the way 
uh, a natural entity we operate. I hope you get my point now. Yeah. So, but I. Okay, Doctor, let's take a short break. We'll take a short break and the program will continue shortly. Welcome back. So let's discuss postpartum depression. Dr. Gabriel Akiyemi is still my guest. So doctor, there have been several cases yeah. of postpartum depression. So why does this occur in some women after childbirth? Um, yes, um, there are cases of postpartum depression. And I think postpartum depression is not well talked about. And I would like to say more about postpartum depression. And also, I want your channel to really uh, make this catchy. What I mean catchy, because we need more awareness for people to know that women really go through, a good number of women go through postpartum depression and they don't even know. And, you know, the end of the feedback you keep getting, you know, high blood pressure over time and all of those things, you know, you know, you listen to so many, see them, you understand, fainting and all of that. So, um, postpartum depression, first of all, of course, after childbirth, it gets worse if, in cases of stillbirths and all of that, it gets so worse. You understand? Or there's something probably that happened in the family, probably the mother you know, lost somebody close, you understand, or a relative, but it's, it gets so worse when, uh, with cases of stillbirth and all of that. But um, even with your child being alive and uh, your husband spending all this money, have given you everything, let me put it that way, it, it, um, we still find a good number of women going through postpartum depression. And that's where um, remediations like counseling come in. That's why I always encourage women, come to the hospital or come to the general hospital or come to the state hospital, come to come to a private hospital, come to a clinic where you can get good health care as regards um, postpartum care. You know, a lot of women, when they, when they give birth, they don't name ceremony. A lot of times, they only visit their their health center to get vaccination for their child. And that's what happened a lot of times. They do not care about their own anatomy, even postpartum examination, like checking their 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 female reproductive system to make sure that everything is intact, you know, uh, from physical examination to medical imagings and all of that to, to to be sure that everything is intact you understand and know where the menses next menses is coming no you know there might be complaints of vaginal discharge this and that you know that you can speak to your doctor about you understand and get good care so what am i the same way the same way when we when women come but a good number of women do not come after childbirth, they don't come. So they go through this depression at home. And, and in most cases, relatives, families do not even know of palliative support or psychopalliative support that they can give them or that can be given or advise them to go see a doctor or a psychologist or psychotherapist or a psychiatrist, so to help uh, better the situation. So um, postpartum depression of course, like I've said, after childbirth. And this has a lot to do with being depressed. We all know what depression is, being down mentally, is a mental health issue, you know, after childbirth. 
And yeah, so it comes with a lot of, you know, uh, um, you know, symptoms like anxiety. Sometimes, sometimes patients feel anxiety. They just get scared, like you know, fear, you know, fear, anxiety. In most cases, anxiety. But out the context of the fact that is a mental health issue that occurs after childbirth is noted. And that's what we call postpartum depression. And sometimes comes with symptoms like anxiety, fear, you know, and all of that, being down, unhappy, and all of that. And uh, it can get worse. In fact, we have there are cases where certain patients can even have CU. You understand? It can even get worse. And, but um, the recommendations are always go see a doctor or go see a psychiatrist. Uh, uh, early diagnosis is very important. And that's why I'm, I'm encouraging all mothers to not stop going to the hospital after childbirth. Your, your own care and the baby's care is very vital. Yeah. Okay, so what would you say are the risk factors in developing postpartum depression? Okay, there are risk factors, yeah. Um, number one, Poor diet can even be a poor diet and poor lifestyle routine can be can be a risk factor. Yeah. Yeah. Um financial problems, you know, associated with family management and all of that can be a risk factor. Finance, you know, and um cases of uh women, you know, probably case of steel beds, I mentioned that you know, um, and all of that can be a risk factor. Um, certain women that probably have gestational high blood pressure, you know, also go through postpartum depression. You understand what I'm saying? But most of these risk factors are not, um, they are not things that must occur, you understand, in every woman, in every woman, you understand, after birth. Or even you understand, even when there's there are signs and something similar to postpartum depression, you understand what I'm saying now. But the fact remains that's why they are called risk factor. They are not causes, they are only risk factors. You understand? Things around the corner that can be traced to, you understand. Uh -huh. So when you go see a doctor, you understand the doctor we will, will look into it and know how to refer you or you know get the perfect diagnosis for you. I know what to do. I know what to recommend for you in terms of medication, routine, diet, lifestyle, changes, and all of that. But like I said, one of the key things that I will not joke with is poor diet and nutrition, or poor nutrition, generally. Uh, poor diet and lifestyle. Poor postpartum diet and lifestyle. You understand? Yeah. So, uh, um, secondly, I've uh, mentioned uh, financial issues. And thirdly, sometimes lack of um, psychopalliative supports. Uh, you know, no family members to support you. No, your mother is not there. Your mother-in-law is not there to support you. You know, within for you know, you can feel so lonely. You can feel so alone. You can feel. You can just you know, mental health issues. You know, develop like that. Then there's no support for you. You know, uh, from your husband, number one, then from your relatives, number two, when it comes to uh, palliative support, you know, uh, during breastfeeding, breastfeeding that can lead to postpartum depression. You understand? And uh, you see, sometimes I'm one of the uh, neuro care, integrative care physicians. I always say that a lot of we black people, right? We have undiagnosed mental health issues. So you see, in Nigeria today, people only think that it is people that are mad. When I mean, you know, uh, or, or probably that that are uh, having um, a mental full blown physical, you know, uh, uh, behaviors. You know, uh -huh. we know what you know what I'm talking about, right? We only think that those are the people that. Uh, needs to visit Yaba or Abel Kuta. You get what I'm saying now. Uh, hey. Those are not the only people that should visit Yaba 
or Abe Okuta. You don't need to get mad or be on drugs or be, go, be you know, not just even when you have mental health issues, you understand, or you are worried, or you can't sleep. You, you understand that's why you have a sleep laboratory there and all of that. Or you have issues that has to do with your brain, basically. You should go and see a psychiatrist. You understand. Go see a psychiatrist. You understand. It's just the wrong stereotype uh, in Nigeria. So when you go see a psychiatrist, the psychiatrist know how to bring the teams together to make sure you get the right care that you need from having the perfect diagnosis. Yeah, I hope you get my point. Yeah. So in this, I have mentioned uh, risk factors that are very key to postpartum depression. Yeah, and lack of good sleep are also there. You understand? A lack of good, because when you don't sleep well, it's part of it. When you don't sleep well, and all of that, so all of those things can be uh, a, uh, um, a risk factor. I wanted to mention probably when you have, uh, I've mentioned the undiagnosed mental health issue before, prob probably before, um, before uh, conception or during conception, a lot of women even develop mental health issues even during pregnancy. Yes. So all of this, yeah. Dr. Gabriel Akiyemi, Integrative Care Physician, Women's Health, thank you for lending your thoughts on the program. Well, I'm afraid that's all we can take on this episode of the program. Thank you for watching. I am Oge Chuku Ukekwe. Bye for now.